Okay, so let's continue with our JSON parser. Last time we implemented the AST for arrays, strings, numbers, booleans. We haven't finished yet the hash maps, so like the mapping from uh, JSON. And I also noticed some memory management issues that we can fix. So yeah, there's a plan for today, implementing the mappings and fixing the memory issues. Also, um, in between last time and today, I did, um, well, the example obviously is not going to work because it has mappings, but I implemented this, uh, uh, you know, viewing of our AST. Uh, it's not, you know, it doesn't um, print the JSON in a JSON format, just because I wanted to see what each uh, node type is. So it, this is an array, then we have numbers and so on, right? It's um, more like a debugging printing. We'll also do the JSON, like the normal dump. But uh, yeah, right now I, I refactored the code a bit. So instead of uh, having all of those data structures, we have a single JSON object load, which takes in the buffer and um, returns the JSON object. And inside of it, I move. I just move the lexer and the parser here. So uh, JSON parser parse, right? And inside of JSON parse, um, we still have the same JSON parse object. And if we go inside of JSON parse object, we'll find at some point should be JSON parse map and JSON parse array. So array is what we did last time, right? And uh, parse map is what we are going to do today. So let's just do to do today. Okay, and we uh, I noticed, yeah, that if we run this with Valgrind, or Valgrind, we have some, well, let's do, click check full. We have some stuff allocated, um, I guess here at line 200, let's, let's check that one out. So we own a string slice, right, into this value, we put it into a token, and uh, this is JSON tokenized number, right, so this one is called here, and this one is called when we do next. Okay, I was, I wished uh, it moved me to, hmm. anyway, it doesn't matter, we do here, next, right, we take a token. Uh, there are cases, I mean, we could have a free function on the JSON object and free those values, but the other issue is we do, we do JSON lexer next inside of peak. And when we do peak, we don't really use that value. So I was thinking, well, then what if instead of actually owning the string, so like on line 200, what if we just use string slices or tokens? So for the value, um, we'll do yes string slice, right? Probably not even pointer. And we'll do that, but first I think we should do the JSON map. So yeah, we'll do like a compiler refact. Uh, comp what's it called? Compiler assisted refactoring. Yeah, I think that's the way of doing it. So let's let's try to do the JSON map, All right? So we obviously know that this is a map because we found the opening squarely brace. So let's imagine that we are inside of the JSON map. And the first thing we need to do is oh, have a token. Let's initialize our uh, map. 
So we'll do ds hash map init and here it's going to be map and it also takes multiple arguments. So it takes in the hash function and the compare function. Well, uh, lucky enough, we have in ds.h already an example for hash maps. We have my hash and my compare. Uh, my hash could be better, but but I guess that for now, wait, where is the JSON object? JSON object here. I was thinking, okay, let's put. Uh, let's put the those functions somewhere here and let's say maybe json object hash and json object compare i mean it's not really call right right because it's I should say maybe string hash or something, but eh, who cares? Okay, anyway, uh, let's go to the error and let's do here. So even the size of, wait, it's size of, oh, it's capacity, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's capacity, so max capacity, let's say. And then we have a uh, JSON object hash json object uh, compare and these functions could be static because it's for um, this part right here mostly okay anyway then first things first let's take a look if we find like what we pick All right and if the json uh, is an r, r squarely brace we can close this um, parsing because it's an empty empty dictionary otherwise we'll do this while loop i mean it's going to be similar but it's uh, yeah quite so while we don't find this like closing bracket we create a json object item well, we know the first first item should be a string. So, um, we could just do this if statement instead of all of that. So, if the token is I'd say if the token is not a string then it doesn't even work so maybe we could just say if we don't find a string we can just print an error This stuff could be a macro if I think about it, but expected a string but found token kind. Right. Like this part could be a macro. Usually I do it as a macro. We can do it afterwards. So JSON token string, right? We found a string. 
that's the first part of our of our puzzle let's call it so let's have ds hash map kv here and let's call it kv right, so kv is this key value pair right so otherwise if we have a string we can say that kv.key is gonna be token.value uh yeah dot okay so in case it is a string we can set this value perfect then we need to go next right we need to go next and we have a similar if statement after the next call and we look for column expected a column but found something else right and after a column we want to parse a json object right let's move this one here just to be first so yeah we want to parse a json object and here instead of adding it to the dynamic array ds hash map insert we want to actually insert key value so here if it works av value that's interesting it should be an address And because this kind of sucks a bit. Yeah, sure, copying wasn't as efficient, but... I mean, I don't think this is gonna work, but... Right, because this is all allocated on the stack, so it's gonna be gone once we... But we need something like this. We'll need to figure out how we, how we can do this assign. I mean, we could parse into value. but um, hmm. wait where is the yeah like we could allocate json object for kv.value and then pass it here instead of having an item that could work so instead of having this item we could say something like kv.value is equal to ds malloc i think the first argument should be null is like the allocator and then size of json object a 
right and then here we do kv dot value and it's gonna say oh the pointer type but what if we cast this into a json object somehow like that hmm. okay all right so let's see if this stuff yeah it's allocator and size okay so if kv dot value is equal to null fail to allocate variable map something and then fail to parse map item or map value let's say then we insert kv into the hash map fail to insert item into map then we need the next token and we expect either squarely to stop the parsing or comma and then again the same stuff like a string yeah i think that this is how you are supposed to do it like allocate the value and then parse it like this and that's the issue with in uh, when we do insert into hash map we don't copy right we don't copy the stuff we just take a reference to it so both the string and the value should be allocated on the heap to be able to insert it into the hash map So yeah, I guess that's most of it. Okay, let's see here, because here we have to print the map. That's what's left to do. So let's do map. Let's see. Let's do that. Then we have JSON map, and the map actually has buckets. So we have to say here buckets count. Well, it's a uh, pointer so buckets a pointer wait no it doesn't work like that I have to go to capacity right then I need one bucket, so it's going to be this dynamic array bucket. We could just delete everything. Bucket, then this dynamic 
array get object map buckets i bucket we read the bucket yeah this could be out of range so let's handle that return default one and now we have a bucket so we can for j smaller than bucket dot count so if we have items right and the item is hash map kv let's do the same stuff here so get from from bucket at index j into kv right and this is the actual item so we can do something like json object dump ident or i guess indent value and here it's going to complain because it wants a json object and we kind of know it's going to be a json object json object pointer even But we also need to print the the key. So let's do that. Let's do something like key, I guess. KV key. And this should be a char pointer. Maybe I don't want to put the new line. Maybe I want to put like uh, something like that. Yeah, but that's not going to work. So. Yeah, let's try it like this. Let's make okay, what did try to parse a map though? So if the token kind is L squarely, it doesn't really make sense. So it finished the array with a two and then it did a what the fuck? That's really weird because there's no there's no hash map. What the fuck? Index out of bounds. Like clearly this isn't called. So maybe I forgot to break in the Alright, maybe I forgot the break in JSON dump. Object dump. So 
So here when we print the array, yeah, I forgot to break. Okay, so that's that's working. And what if we try? To do a JSON object. Shit. Expected a column but found string. I mean, yeah, it's a string, but uh, what? So let's see parse map. So here we pick. If it's not a string, oh, do I have to? Hmm. So here we picked, right? I guess we know it's not a square lip. Oh my fucking god. So. Yeah, now I was wondering if do we really need peak though? Like we could get the next token. I guess in this case we don't really need peak because we know that the first token must be a right squarely or a string. It cannot be something else. Hmm. But at the same time, I think we need to. Yeah, I don't think we need peak. Because, yeah, we kind of know the first token must be a string. Okay, interesting. Let's show here. Let's just you know print every debug it. Percentage s token value. Let's just see what let's just see what happens. So we get ASD, that's fine. Here we malloc the value just to have it. We parse the object. Let's see if it's being parsed correctly. It's gonna be a number, we know that. Uh, JSON object pointer kv dot value arrow. Oops. Number ah, float. Well, that works too. So we we insert it, and we do some other stuff. Okay. Um, when we dump it, do we use J? Yeah, we use J. Okay. Uh, where does that happen? Fail to dump six. Hmm. No other errors though. Huh. I guess I'm missing, you know, like this is building a call stack, right? Like the stack traces. Let's do log error here too. to get item from 
Oder bin ich? I like this. Makes sense to do here. So if we make and echo this again, we get fail to get item at 387. So this is out of bounds. Did I not initialize the hash map? I did. Oh, no. Ah, shit, it's not a dynamic array. Hmm. Yeah, it's not dynamic array, so I can just do buckets i. Okay. Whoa. Excuse me, what the fuck? Ah, uh, it tried. So here in example. At line 2. And then 18. It says expected the string found a comma. That's weird because a comma is fine in parsing a map. Expected a string found comma. Oh, expected a string. I guess I need to call. So if we find comma, I need to call again Lexer next. Right. Holy shit, it just parsed the entire thing. We have a map, then we have the key, the value. the numbers, the properties, key was null, the value was null, then we have a key skills, and the value is an array. Shit. That's nice. Yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. We actually managed to parse the mappings all right yeah so the next step uh, the next thing that i said i wanted to do was that um, changing the value of a token into a slice so but yeah, I mean, the idea for the hash map was pretty simple, right? We were checking the first thing. It should be a string, which is the key. Then we need the column to separate the string, like the key and the value. Then we parse the value. And we have to build this key value pair. Um, which, yeah, I mean, it's a bit scuffed if I think about it because you have to allocate it but it's still decent I'd say right and then we insert everything into the hash map and yeah that's pretty much everything for parsing a hash map so right we added this hashing function which we could do better i mean this one is a pretty scuffed one and the capacity is only 100 like it's so small okay we added some stuff in the json dump section which maybe better way to call it would be json debug or something 
and then for parsing a map just covered it yeah so small changes picture add match map pretty cool so yeah i mean obviously a, a good improvement here would be another hashing function bigger capacity and I forgot what else I was thinking about, so yeah. But yeah, the, the other thing would be for a token, I think would be cool if JSON token would have here this string slice. So now if we make, we'll get a bunch of errors. Well, this is a string. Mm -hmm. Right, like here we could just pass a slice and not have to do this part, owning the owning the string, right? Then for example here We have that. I mean, uh, here we need to compare the value though. Right, but in a string slice, we have some helper functions. Like starts with. I mean, we don't have compare, but. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. Here we can allocate it. Right, and here let it slice, slice, and I guess here doesn't matter what value we put in it, we could put a zero, and then at the end we free the value. Like that makes sense. And we store the slice. Then for numbers, same thing. Slice. This stays the same. JSON next. I would just replace this with zero, like initialize the string slice with zero, even though null is basically zero, but it makes me okay. This one is the error, right? So again, we don't do that, we just slice. And we put the illegal token as well. Okay. Then I have some stuff. And then I would assume that at these stages. So here. We actually need to own the string right let's see what did i remove this part which i need now okay i 
So here's going to be token value and probably objects thing like this. I said const can be just right makes sense so we allocate into string then char pointer kind of need value and then we can just ds3 A value with read and we might need something similar for uh, this one so we compare that and we set the value and then ds3 null value and I guess any other string doesn't matter and then here for example we want to allocate it and we could allocate it directly into it so uh, maybe something like uh, kv dot key and let's do char pointer Wait, I have to do it like this. Yeah. So yeah, we we allocate the string right here. And then we do all of that. I don't think we have any other errors. I think those were Oh my god, let's see if it's still working. Perfect. And now if we... Check this maybe with... Leak check full. Leak check full would just show us where it was allocated, I guess. So, yeah. And it's strange because last time it was showing better how we lost those blocks, but I mean, pretty sure that the uh, that we have some extra. So, for example, in this one, it says two blocks lost. Somewhere here at the uh, Five, seven, four. When we appended an item, but it's still a bit weird. How? Oh, an error. It's, I find it's still a bit weird how we lost two more blocks, like 11 allocs and 8 frees, right? That's what I'm a bit confused because, yeah, the, oh, yeah, obviously, we have how many arrays? Three arrays. We didn't 
free them. Okay, so let's do then. Uh, where is JSON object? Dump. Right, so let's do JSON object three. And here we can do JSON object three. It kind of makes sense. So we'll have something like similar to this JSON object three. All right. It's going to be like a switch statement. And then if we have a string, we just have to do this free object string, right? Then break. If we have a number, we don't do anything. Same for boolean. Same for null, then for array, ds dynamic array three object array. And I guess this one's the address. And then here we want to Read the hash map. All right. I mean, I deleted the important part. I guess for deleting the hash map, we need to iterate it. All the buckets, all the key values. Mm, this can fail. Okay, and then DS3 we want to free the key and then we want to call JSON object 3 on kv.value. I think we need to also oh, we don't need to cast it. And maybe if this is not zero we return for one and then I'll be a error fail to free JSON object and then at the end after we do everything DS hash map free object map So this just frees the dynamic arrays. Yeah, like my issue with this is you have to manually free all the items. Which you know makes sense because you don't know what's inside of the value. We'd have to do something like hash map init needs to know how to free values, how to free keys for example, and uh, probably the size of each one. So it would be too much stuff to add, to be fair. So I think something like this kind of makes sense. Okay, so we still have something extra allocated. What? Okay, let's free. Okay, it's the same thing for arrays then. So, 
Oh, actually, yeah, it doesn't matter. Because Ray doesn't know how to free items either. Yeah, then we are fine. Okay. So let's do something like for int i is 0. Actually, I can copy it. I can copy this stuff. Right. Here, the only difference is I want to get the reference. So this can be a pointer. The fuck? Oh, get ref is... Uh, Not returning an error. Oh yeah, that's true because it. Um, I mean, I don't really check if you are out of bounds, right? Although maybe I should actually check. I don't know how I missed this stuff when I implemented it. Like it kind of seems important. You would think. So it is being used in some places inside of priority queue. Uh, but we can ignore that. So yeah, and obviously it's kind of required, but okay. So we get the item from the array, but we need to get it by reference because uh, if we use get you saw here it ju it just does mem copy so it um, it's gonna be just a copy of it it's not gonna be the real pointer that we want to free so then we json object free the item All right, and if we we freed everything, nice. Okay, and if we do the example, shit, it's still um, it's still some stuff that's not parsed, uh, that's not freed. I mean, so five, six, four. But I thought I freed this stuff. Did I not? So this is the key value. So when we find the string, I free it. Oh, I mean, it's it's not a string. Yeah, but like here, I free the key. The fuck? So we have seven blocks that are lost, right? Well, nine. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine keys. So we didn't free the keys. What? Okay. 
and then we have no we it's both of them that's so weird because we clearly like we malloc this thing and then we free it Let's see what pointer this is, KV key. So yeah, we have some pointers, right? And what if we also five six four? Oh shit, what? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm really dumb. Uh, I didn't free the value, I guess. So yeah we free the key then we do json object free value but i still need to do yo we managed all the memory leaks that's what i'm talking about nice so now we have our JSON parser, it builds the AST, uh, right, and it also handles all the memory leaks. Now, I guess the next step would be to, instead of, see how here we use null and everything, would be nice if we add allocator, even if it's just like a mock allocator i'm just curious how much so it uses um python 3 how much memory is this so this is bytes this is kilobytes and this is megabytes right so like two megs I mean, wait, that's so much memory. I guess uh, it's mainly because of where is this dynamic unit? Dynamic array init. Um, yeah, but when you do the first append, it increases the capacity to this much. So yeah, it's like 8,000 items. Okay, I mean, yeah, pretty, pretty decent. Uh, adding the extra allocator, we need to add allocator here. Perfect for JSON Lexer. And initialize it with allocator if we want that uh, then also add it for the parser where is the parser should be down here 
I mean, we have JSON object. Even JSON object would need the allocator because we do uh, this free call. Right. And that's one thing. And then we have JSON parser. And yeah, even JSON parser would need the allocator because we also do free and init. So yeah, I mean, that wouldn't be that big of a deal, to be honest. And then the idea would be, it's going to be pretty easy to just because we have JSON load, right? And JSON dump. Just JSON object dump. What if we say JSON object, JSON object debug? What if we rename it to debug? Somewhat more... Uh, like we want to see the debugging stuff of a JSON. Okay. Yeah, I guess... Picks uh, all memory leaks. Hopefully it's all of them. Yeah, and maybe the only thing that I want to do uh, left is where we use this stuff. I could do something like if it's not zero, return default one. Right. I mean, I don't know if I want to do... Zero, two, four. Oh, it's more. Yeah, now I wish I had a macro for this, but... I'm like, if I'm gonna do the macro, it's gonna be the last two... But even then, like, the macro would, wouldn't be complicated because it's just typing, so... Yeah. I'm curious if where I called. Oh, I haven't done error checks for this one, for example. All right, that sucks. I mean, because it's for the hash map, and I use that. And even for this one, it would be important. Priority to pick. Yeah, anyway. So that would be some small change here. Because yeah, I just wanted to. Oops, there is another one I missed. Yeah.
Oh my god, I'm I'm changing. I don't even know how that's possible. Like I opened the changed version. What? Yeah, sometimes it's confusing. Wait, what the fuck? Are you serious? I changed. Yeah, sometimes like that uh, fugitive stuff, it's annoying as fuck, but. Oh, yeah, let's do the macro. No, that we fucked up. So if. Then we go to the end. It's not equal to zero. Then we go one. That should be the macro. And then we can even use the same macro for this one. Right, so yeah, those were the small changes I was thinking about. Okay, anyway. Right. But uh, other than that, yeah, we managed to finish the JSON uh, object, right? So we are able to load the JSON object, print the debugging version, but eh. uh, the next thing maybe that I want to do is to just have a JSON object dump that prints the JSON as JSON formatted. And yeah, add that allocator into the data structure and maybe even move this entire stuff into ds.h how about that like having it available for ds.h like we would have access to this function and uh, json object data structure and then you'd be able to do stuff like json object load from a string into the object and you'd have this uh, data structure like maybe you read some config from a file and you have like json parsing in c without doing anything i think that would be pretty pretty cool so yeah that's what i want to do next time so right now we are at the stage where we have the ast for the json so yeah let's let's try to add the json parser into ds.h and do it with also with the allocator like custom allocator if you want to like imagine you are on embedded and you want to do some to parse some json for some reason i don't know that would be cool so um, yeah thank you for uh, joining for today and see you next time